Okay, welcome everyone. This is the online workshop practice session, welding session. Today is 7th of May, 1 p.m. British summertime. And we are in the Pariser workshop with uh, Paul. Um, and he will be the demonstrator today. And we will also have Gökhan and Maxim to assist with the demonstration. So I will be uh, joining you with chat for any questions. And we have also supporting uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Oz. Okay. So I want to start uh, with sharing my screen just to give you some small introduction. All right. So in welding, like in every other practice, safety is the first thing. Okay, so you can see here, uh, Paul um, wearing the proper safety equipment. He will be wearing them also in the session. You will see that. So you can see the welding gloves is quite important. The welding mask with air supply. So this air supply is like a giving fresh air into the mask. He will tell about this anyway. Safety shoes, of course, and uh, flame retardant uh, coat proban coat it's called and we have some other equipment like a local exhaust ventilation lev to remove the fumes and to keep the welder safe right so that welder will not uh, poisoned by the, the fumes and we have this uh, simple looking device which is the ground connection it is a must to have for welding and it protects us basically from electric shock. Uh, welding gloves as well are good insulators, but this is a uh, must to have because we need to make sure the current flows through the welding table, right? The, uh, the welding station. And here at the bottom, you can see a welder, a indoor welding, uh, how we will do it. This is MIG welding. And it's just a typical uh, arrangement. So the aim of this session is demonstrate and practice uh, metal inert gas and tungsten inert gas welding, MIG and TIG in short. So uh, the, of course, the, the actually we want to do this face-to-face -face this semester, but uh, due to the circumstances, we couldn't. So we planned this session the best as we can to give you the uh, feeling realistic feeling uh, on what's going on with the welding, but which kind of uh, practice you should do. So in the MIG welding, so in the welding uh, demonstration, we will do simple, simple uh, operations. Uh, this is like a straight bead, bead on plate welding on MIG and TIG. You can see at the left MIG, the right side TIG. And we will also do some fillet welding to make a perpendicular plate weld on a base plate using the MIG welding. It's not shown here, but you will see it in the session. And um, the basic uh, technology uh, information. So metal inert gas uses consumable electrode, as you can see here. So it's automatically feed through the nozzle, uh, feed through the welding torch or nozzle. And it's all, always, makes sure that it is uh, creating the weld pool here. And we have a welding gas, right? Shielding the process, like uh, shielding the weld not to be uh, contaminated. A tungsten inert gas does not have a consumable electrode. It has a non-consumable tungsten electrode. So we have to feed an external filler rod if we want to uh, use an additional material in the weld. And we can also have autogenous welding with this TIG, which you don't need a filler rod in that case, you just need the material itself to weld to another one. Okay, so this is the basic uh, difference in between MIG and TIG, so the consumable electrode. So the, the general tooling looks like that. So ba basically both of them has a welding torch, uh, as you can see here, MIG and TIG. And in TIG, we have also consumable filler rod, uh, like a filler rod, which we have to introduce with our another hand. So TIG is quite involved process compared to MIG. Uh, you will see soon. And we have a Kahoot quiz. So please join and I will start the quiz some, somewhere in the middle of the session. 
And this is going to be two hour session. So please keep until the end uh, in both in this room, Zoom room and in the Kahoot uh, quiz as well. This is the pin number, I will put it anyway. So I'll stop sharing. And please, uh, by the way, please uh, come into the Kahoot quiz with your student ID. Okay, so we'll start the session fast. Yes, uh, we are back at you, Maxime. Thank you very much. And let's start. Hi oh, guys, uh, Paul is on his way, come in. Yeah, excuse me, so. No, that, that's okay, Paul, so we're we waiting. Yeah, we're beginning. Just, I'll have to give them. We're gonna do two processes today. We'll be doing um, metal in a gas, which is pig welding. Then we're going to do pig welding as well. Um, we're going to do a series of runs on the plate, maybe three or four, depending. Um, this is your mug gun. This is the church. You depress the button on for constant electrode, let go as soon as you want to stop welding. Um, this is what's called a consumable electrode. Inside there, inside the machine is a 15 kilogram spool of wire, the same as that one. That rotates and runs out through a series of rollers, forcing the wire out of the gun. You can see there's tiny little holes in there. This is where the um, the shielding gas comes out. So at the moment we're using Argus Shield Light, which is a mixture of argon and CO2. Um, different gases for different applications. So you might have um, Argus Shield Heavy, there's all uh, Spec Shield, they all have different compositions to lay penetration and such. Um, so as soon as you press it, turn the turn the you know, if you press the torch, hit the button, the wire comes out, as you can see, like that, that's your consumable electrode. So it's very important when we start welding that from the contact tip to the end of the wire, that's maintained of a, a distance of about uh, 15 to 20 millimetres. From that distance, that 15 to 20 millimetres, there's a voltage of about uh, 18 to 20 volts. So if you was up there, for example, that 15 to 20 volts is still being distributed through the length of wire, which it then be, becomes um, inefficient. So you can see if the welding wire is up there, for example, you've still got 15, 18 to 20 volts running through that length of wire. So I'll just show you this as an example. You can see how it still becomes inefficient. The wire still generates the energy. Uh, 15, eight, uh, sorry, 18 to 20 volts is still running through. So it's, it's crucial that we maintain that, that length of stick out on the wire. Otherwise the uh, arc won't burn efficiently. So you put the gas shield over the gun, like so. You press the torch. The shielding gas protects the arc, the ultraviolet radiation is emitted and your arc is burning then, then the wire melts onto the uh, parent metal. So depending on which hand you, are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed, that's good. So you, with, with MIG welding, you always go from right to left with your dominant hand. So if you was left-handed, for example, you would go from left to right. You always, with mid welding, you, you always push into the corner. Okay, so you would go from there to there. The torch is perpendicular in that direction and then about 30 degrees in the other direction. So usually 
I uh, tend to mention that when you're welding, unbeknownst to yourself, you concentrate in looking at that. You don't really know what your body's doing. So whilst you're breathing, you're breathing in, you're breathing out. And when you look up, lift your arm up, you've done a nice big zigzag rather than a straight line. So I tend to mention it's, it's probably easier if you lean up against the bench, for example, for support. And then you're not worrying about moving around with your body. So you go from, from right to left, maintaining that 15 millimeters to 20 millimeters high all the way along, nice and steady. As soon as you come to the edge of the plate, let go of the trigger. So it's literally as soon as you want to start, press the button. When you've finished, let go. Okay. So I'll just do one run on there to show you. If you guys want to pop your helmets down and maybe stand back a little bit. You uh, want to just turn your, turn your helmet on. You've got air-fed filtered helmets on to prevent uh, the fumes burning our face at the moment. So these are a battery-operated fume. So air goes in there, it's filtered, it's fed up the tube and then into the helmet with a sealing face around. Can I ask a question, uh, Paul? Yeah. So this this air fed mask, yes. it it also protects from the UV light of the welding, right? So the helmet two... protects you from the from the ultraviolet radiation. Uh, the the actual the, the battery pack at the back is to protect you from the fumes that the arc emits. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So. Yeah. Right, so it should be, it should be alright from there with this. Okay, so I just do one small run now from from right to left, and then uh, you can come in and have a go. Okay, so lean up against there. You ready, everybody? Helmets down. Yeah, good. Okay, we're ready. Uh, hello? <laughs> Is you okay there? <laughs> yeah. Was it okay for the camera? It, it was perfect. Great. Uh, I think everybody see it clearly. Uh, yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, okay, perfect then. Okay, I'll just do one more just to show. I've just turned the voltage and amperage down just ever so slightly. Okay. Sure that that's Can I ask you another question, Paul? Sorry. Again, sorry. For the local egg, local exhaust ventilation, can you yes. also show, show that one before you? Yeah. Uh, I'm not. At the moment, we've got this the LEV. This is this is on at the moment. This is our primary source of uh, local exhaust ventilation. This is our primary source, and this is our secondary source of filtration. So you, you always have a primary source. If you was to be uh, somewhere where you don't have access to LEV, local exhaust ventilation, then you would need your secondary um, backpack. Yeah, thank you. Okay, All right, are you ready? Okay, helmets down. Yeah, good. Put your eyes. So again, in the angle from right to left. One minute. Uh, one minute. One minute. There we go. You can see how glowing red hot that is with the light on it. That's cherry red, so what would that be? About three or four hundred degrees. Oh, this soon is great. The, the heat in the plate is soon, soon absorbed. Um, that's why you should always wear your PPE. Even though, even though that that looks, it doesn't look hot. 
you know, that now, even though it's cooled down, it's still probably 200 degrees, you know, make a serious uh, blister on your hand if you were to do that. Okay, right. You all ready? You've got a lot of Hold it in your right hand. Okay. That's okay. it. Okay. Yes. That okay. one there. And then maybe that. Open the thing there, like so. Lean up against the table. That's it. Nice and comfy. Just to let you know, this time I'm going to apply this so that you're going to have a view. Okay. As if you wear the mask. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, get a little bit closer then. Yeah. So whenever you're ready. So it just it just needs to maintain about that height, something like that. Okay, so we have filter now. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Super. Yeah, I like this view as well, with filter. Well, that is a natural. <laughs> oh, this is the, <laughs> the belt is so you natural. Done this before? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so try try another one down there if you wish. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll snip the end. It's always clean. You can see on the camera. You can see how that's balled up on the on the very end. So if you was to try and strike the arc by pressing the button and doing another weld, is it forms two things. Uh, that um, oxidization that's on the end of uh, the, the wire at the moment, that would be deposited into your nice clean weld. So we don't really want that. So we want to nip that off. It serves two purposes. Not only does it stop it from um, ox put placing oxidization in the weld, it contacts a lot easier because it's a nice clean surface for it to arc up on. So there's two aspects for it there. Uh, try again. Okay. I'll get nice and comfy. Whenever you're ready, from right to left. Super. Well done. Oh, good. Can you learn? See, so once well. again, how hot that plate is. It's glowing red up there. So, three, four hundred degrees. Cherry red up. If you was to go and pick that up now, it would make a serious mess of your fingers. So this is why it's, it's extremely important to wear all the PPE that we wear. It's very clumsy, uh, it's very hot. Hmm. You do get very hot and sweaty in summer, but the upshot is, um, if we didn't have this um, protective equipment on, if we was to weld for, say, five, ten minutes without this equipment on, it would be the equivalent to lying in the sun on holiday for 12 hours without any any form of uh, skin protection. So that's very wow, important that's that we wear this equipment. Wow, that's a big so number. That's, uh, that's, that's the MIG welding completed for now. Um, happy? Yeah. yeah, he's competent already, trained welder. <laughs> so, Paul, could you could you comment on a little yeah. bit about this? Is this is a, a very basic set? Oh. Um, this is only a, a two hundred and fifty five amp set. We have we have sets uh, based in a lab that go up to four hundred amps. Um, you know, it's the same as driving a car. The more amperage, the faster you go. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a good little set. That it's a Lincoln. It's American. Um, they're a good, trustworthy um, site. And you can see that they've got lots of different settings, all different ranges. That's your wire feed speed. So this is your coarse settings, and then these are the refined settings. So it's a, it's a good, good little set. That. So, yeah, this is nice. So that's for the mead. So do you have any question on the mead? Yes. So this is where the... Wait, sorry, Gokan, can you repeat your question? 
So, you know, sometimes we are doing so fast or too slow. Does it affecting the quality of welding? Yes. So that's a very good point. Um, if you were to, it's, it's very similar in respect to the lathe and the milling machine where you have to have the speed and feed correct. Yeah. So if you was to set this at, say, 150 amps and you was going too fast, you wouldn't get penetration. Yeah. So I can show you an example, if you want, uh, without gas. Yeah. Um, and it gives you an example. So um, this porosity, this is why you need uh, the, the Argus shield to protect it from atmospheric gases. Uh, it's an inert gas, so it just sits over the top and protects the arc from uh... Uh, we lost view. Uh, hey, Maxim, we lost the view. Okay, in this in this case, I'll just take everyone to Kahoot quiz. Let's go to Kahoot quiz for a bit. Uh, So everybody is here at the Kahoot? So can everybody connect to Kahoot so I can we can have some questions? We will have three questions in the beginning. Okay, how about, I think we can have more. Isn't it? Yeah. He's doing a quiz now because oh, the time yeah. we started to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just do some quiz first. Yeah. Thank okay. You. We are back. So after the quiz, we can. Continue. Oh, you're back. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. No problem. I'll let you do the quiz. Okay. Uh, so we are 12 people now. Let's. Let's start. Okay. So which personal protective equipment is not, not absolutely necessary for welding? So first red one is balaclava and blue one is air fed mask. Yellow one is pro band coat. And Green one is gloves, well, a pair of gloves, yeah. So let's see. Uh, sorry for that, James. Um, do you want me to try starting again? And you can maybe join. Let me try again. But um, if I start again, everybody has to... Uh, let's start again. Let me just start again. So please, I'll change the Kahoot uh, pin number. Okay, sorry, but I, one of your friend cannot be joining. So I have to, I just want to. Oh. <laughs> no, that's no, okay. No, we don't have, we don't have yet. We don't have yet. No. Um, can you hear me now, Murat? Yeah, I can, I can. I'm just, I just want to. Do again. Um, the code. Yeah, I just restart the code because one colleague said he cannot, he or she cannot join. Okay, no problem. We are waiting for you. Yeah, sorry. Wait. No, no, no problem. We are ready. So this is the new pin number. Can everybody join again? 
I don't know why it didn't let. Please use your student ID. Okay, now we have less number of uh, <laughs> attendance. It's working now, okay. But I, I can imagine now it's not working with some of you, some of the friends. So hopefully everybody are here. So I'm starting because if you try to join later, it will not allow you also, that's another issue. Okay, so let's start. Building. Okay. So which PPE is not absolutely necessary for welding? So red one, balaclava, blue one, air fed mask, yellow one, probane coat, and green one, pair of gloves. Actually, in the previous one, you got all correct, I think, so. Okay, so yes, it's balaclava. It's not absolutely necessary um, because it's only for actually COVID times we wear this kind of protecting equipment for the face. But for welding, air fed mask already protects it. And gloves are an absolute essential for electric shock and heat, heat resistance. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Oh. Yeah, scoreboard is like that. Great. So let's see. Which one is not a piece of welding equipment? Red one is welding torch. Blue one is welding gas. Yellow one, power supply. And green one is base plate. Yeah, which one is not a piece of welding equipment? Hi, Murat. Please, could you share your screen? Oh, sorry, I didn't share. Oh, thanks a lot for <laughs> telling me. I forget to share this time. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. I forget to share. So. Yeah, it is a uh, yellow uh, base plate is the answer. Base plate is the workpiece during welding. Yes, so it's not a equipment. It's the part that we are welding. So that's correct. Great. Welding torch is the yeah, equipment. It's the one which uh, deposit material on the plate. And power supply, it's equipment, uh, of course, because it pr provides the welding uh, power. Okay, so scoreboard is like that. Great. And third one, what is the lock? What is the use of local exhaust ventilation? So red one is remove welding fumes, and blue one supply fresh air, and yellow one protect the welder, and green is remove argon gas. Yeah, sorry, everyone, I didn't see your chat messages until now. Okay, 
Uh, so it is, yes, it is for removing the welding fields. Yeah. Uh, supply fresh air is more from air, air fed mask. And uh, uh, protect the welder is for sure. It is, uh, it is the use, but it's not really specific use of LEV. And uh, removing argon gas, uh, Oh, actually, no, this question is wrong. Oh, I asked this wrong. Sorry about that. This one I set up wrong. It should be what is not, which one is not the use of local exhaust ventilation. You know what, what, we, what I will do is I will create a new Kahoot and we will continue the next three questions uh, because I think we had a lot of problem with the first three questions. So uh, let's just end this one for now. Yeah, sorry, this was the wrong question. Supplying fresh air is not the LEV's use, but all others are. So remove welding fumes, protect the welder, and removing argon gas are all use of LEV. Okay, so this is the first time I had this problem since the <laughs> online sessions. Okay, so let's go back to the- Do you want us to do the TIG while you modify that? No, no, uh, you can- uh... <laughs> You can go to the, you can continue the, with the perpendicular plate, MIG, if you like. Are you going to do that or are you going to take now? Oh, don't use the MIG, right? Yeah, I was just going to show you the difference without the gas. Yeah, we can so, do that, Mara. We can show the difference without the gas and, and while you modify the uh, Kahoot. Uh, no, no, uh, the Kahoot will be later. I'll do the re le uh, next hour. I'll do the okay. next okay. three questions. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so we do, do what I do then. Yeah, you can show that. Yeah. So yeah. we continue then. Uh, we'll just yes, the please. Yes, gas please. As a protective shield. You can see that we've got the cylinder of Argo Shield right there at the moment. That's our inner protective gas. I've just turned it off so I can show you an example of the arc being um, submitted to atmosphere rather than it having a, a protective shielding gas. Um, so you can see we've got a Good example, nice clean run there. It's a little bit blue, a little bit gray, but there's no holes, there's no porosity or anything like that. It's nice and clean. Well, a little bit clean, a little bit of debris there. But I'll show you the difference now without the protective gas. Okay. So you might want to just pop your gloves on if you're going to stand that close and it's nip. Okay. Just show you the difference between uh, gas on and gas off. So, right. Okay, shell helmet down, very good. Instantly, you can see the difference in the plume of smoke. And then if you come a little bit closer, you can see the two differences. One's with gas. Look at all the holes and the porosity in that plate that we've just done. There's a lot more debris on there and fumes. Um, but the difference is significant there. You can see all the holes and the porosity. So that, that isn't strong at all. That's not a very good weld. That wouldn't hold anything um, and that would fail instantly uh, on any form of non-destructive testing. So that's, that's, that's why we need the protective gas. Okay. 
there. Okay, do you want to go through to T? So we are done for the MIG now. So what, what should we do? Right. Oh, MIG is done. Okay. Uh, is done. Okay, great. Uh, so we can have a break if you like. Is that okay? Yeah, we can have a break. It's fine. Yeah, I think we, we now can have a break and uh, we can continue with TIG after the break. So everyone, let's meet at 1.55. Okay. Yeah. We'll give a 15 minute break. Please don't leave the room. And uh, yeah, just keep keep online. Thank you. See you. So in the second part, we will do the tungsten inert gas welding and we will do some simple straight weld. So let's connect to Paul and Paul and the team. Very similar application to next door, but uh, where next door's uh, metal inert gas was a consumable electrode, this is um, an electrode, tungsten electrode. So that's your fixed tungsten electrode. So every time that, that, that gets debris on the end of the tungsten, we grind it up to a point um, and then we reinsert that back into the colic based system. So the gas comes out of the end of the shroud, very similar to the gas for the uh, for the metal in the gas for the MIG. So as you can see, it's diffused. The gas comes out of there. It's diffused. And then it floods the um, the arc and sits uh, over the arc nicely with the uh, the the argon gas. Now this this gas, although it's um, a shielding gas, this is a hundred percent argon. Well, ninety nine point nine 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 nine. You can't guarantee one hundred percent pure argon. Like that. So this is a colic based system. So see the, the more you tighten that up, it clamps onto the uh, the tungsten, which is ground to 2.4 diameter. You get different size tungsten. So this one currently is 2.4. You can go down to 1.6 or you can go up to 3.2 and 4 millimeters. Obviously, the, the bigger in diameter, the more amperage um, that you'll generate. This machine currently goes, this is a 375, so that's 375 amp. Again, this is the Lincoln Electric one. Um, AC, DC, so we can go onto DC. This is for direct current for uh, uh, steel, ferritic steel, and austenetic steel. And then if we wanted to do aluminium, we flick it onto AC, which is for uh, alternating current for aluminium. You don't need as much heat with aluminium with the low melting point. So these settings along here are for full settings. So you can have the arc pulsing on and pulsing off. So as soon as you put your foot pedal down, the, the arc will be off and on like that. Um, that again, reduces the heat input. One of the elements of reducing the heat input. So you can cap, you can turn the, the amperage up and cap it. Um, just have it set to 150 for now. This is a water cooled set, so it can run at full amperage um, more or less all day long because it's got a, a water chiller built into the sump.
nice and easy machine to work with. American. Okay, so um, tungsten in it, gas. So again, we've got the, the gas shield. It's very similar to before where we go from, from right to left, um, where before we had um, an arc gap of about uh, 15 to 20 millimetres. We need to try and maintain a three millimetre gap. So where before we was 15, 15 to 20 millimetres away from the plate, we now need to be three millimetres away from the plate. So almost the thickness of the material away from the plate. So round about there. And again, we go from right to left. You can either hold it like a pen, like a big pen, or some people prefer to hold it like that. That button is has been um, bypassed. At the moment, we're using um, the foot pedal. So we've got the, well, put it down. At the moment, we've got the foot pedal, so it's, it's very similar to driving a car, if anybody can drive a car. So you put your foot down to accelerate, you put your foot down for more amperage. So the more amperage you want, you put your foot right down to the floor. Uh, same again for the reverse aspect. If you want to slow down, if you want reduced amperage, you lift your foot off. So that's the same as the button. So on, off, on, off. So it's the same. It's just a, a command on switch on the machine. So near the gas coming out of there, purging. So again, put my gloves on. We'll do um, an autogenous run at the moment, first and foremost. We'll do a run without filler wire. So that's what's called autogenous. Um, although you can weld two plates together like so without any filler wire. So you could weld that along like so, you could weld it and it would fuse together, but it wouldn't be very strong. You could most probably, after a couple of attempts, you could probably break that. Um, once you've uh, mastered working autogenously, you then introduce the filler wire. So we'll do, we'll do a couple of runs without filler wire. So just from, from right to left. And then once you've mastered that application will then bring the filler wire in with this hand. And it's literally about 120 degrees. You've got to take that three millimeters off there, going from right to left. And then you're introducing the filler wire into the weld pool itself. So the tungsten will generate a weld pool of molten material. You need to be inserting the filler wire into the molten base material. So we don't want that sort of scenario where you're placing the, the wire onto the, the tungsten. Ultimately, that will short circuit it out. So we've got the, we've got the return earth on the corner of the bench there. Um, if, for example, you're not wearing any gloves and you were to do that and you touch that, you would become the return earth and you would get a, an electric shock. So that's another good reason why you should wear gloves. <laughs> that is the return earth. That's the return earth, yeah. So that's the return earth that makes the circuit. Once you depress the pedal on the floor, that makes a full complete circuit. Okay. So I'll just do I'll just do an autogenous run now. So that's going from, from right to left. Okay, try and maintain that three millimeters height. Well, nice and slow. Let the material heat build up in the material um, so that it's molten. Right, okay. So put your helmet down. Excellent. Right. So put right down to the plate. Maintain that three millimeters height. We're so going from right to left. Nice and slow, nice and steady. Let that heat build up in the plate. Maintain that three millimetres height from the tungsten to the plate. And then as soon as we get to the end of the plate, we stop traversing and turn the, remove the foot off the pedal. 
So that's what's called a, an autogenous weld. You can see how it's it's molten. All that all that's done is the, the arc has melted the base material. There's no re uh, re reinforcement there with the, the filler wire. That's that's almost exactly the same level as the material itself. So nice and steady from right to left. And I'll just show you this example with the filler wire. Going from right to left, inserting the filler wire into the molten weld pool. So left hand out of the way until you have an arc established, because we, we don't want to start like this, because uh, there's a potential for the uh, return to jump through the filler wire, which is conductive. So left hand out of the way, establish the arc, then bring the filler wire in to the weld pool. Okay. So I held my down. Okay, we establish our arc there like that. Then we bring the filler wire in. Nice and steady, nice and steady. One little dab at a time. Maybe one every millimeter or so. Nice and steady. Try and maintain that three millimeter height. We don't want to touch that tungsten as we're welding. Because then the tungsten becomes contaminated. So nice and steady. We do the opposite now. So what we do is we remove our filler wire and then down slope with the foot pedal. So did you did you always push the foot pedal the same amount or you change it on the way? Yeah, so it is like a, an accelerator in a car. So you can um, you can put your foot down more or less if you want. Uh, but I, I maintained it about 100 amps or something like that. I've, I've just capped it at 150. You're pressing all the way down? Or... Yeah. The yeah. So I can show you, I can show you the size of the weld pool at 150 amps. If I just do that now, what's your camera? Done? So if I put the, the camera right down now, if I put the uh, foot right down, so that's 150 amps. Okay, you can see, you can see the diameter. What's that about eight millimeters, something like that. For uh, 150 amps. So if I just increase, we increase it by 100 amps to 350, you should be able to see a significant difference in the diameter of the, the weld pool. So I'll do it again. Okay. So there you can see the difference from a 150 amps to 250 amps, the difference in diameter in size. And if we, we want to push our look, I'll go up to 350. Okay, so I'll do another one on here, which is 350 amps. Yeah, so you can see there's a, a significant difference in 150, 250, and 350. So the, the more power that you, you put down, the bigger the heat influx and uh, diameter in the, the weld pool. Okay. Paul, by the way, uh, if you didn't push the foot pedal at all, so it wouldn't deposit any material. No, no. All I've done, all I've done there is um, I've set the amperage to one fifty, two fifty, and three fifty, and put my foot down. So all that's done is generated a weld pool. So you push, you push, you push the foot pedal. You, you put the foot pedal right down to the floor. Oh, to the you, maximum. Let me, let me just show you. 
So you, you can see that's like an accelerator pedal in the car. Can they see that? Yeah. So you 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 put your foot foot right down. So you can you can okay. set it to, to full amperage, and then you can only go you can go fifty percent down. So you have complete control over over the power range with that. So you're going from 150 to 250, 150 to 250, and then foot right down, you're at 350. So if you're into a difficult circumstance where you need more power to get into a corner, for example, you would put your foot down a little bit further. So it's it's you've got four things, run three things running. You've got your, your left hand for the filler wire, you've got your right hand for the torch, and then you've got your, your right foot providing the power. So there's a lot of dexterity going on that you need. So TIG has the flexibility to adjust the power. What's that? Sorry? The TIG, uh, TIG welding has the flexibility to adjust the power. That yes, can exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's unless, um, if you if you switch over the, the circumstances on the board, if you switch over to the button, that removes the pedal aspect. So I've set that to 150. If I was to press that button once, it would be set to 150, exactly the same scenario as the MIG welding. So it's press on, constant 150 amps, press off, that's, that's it off completely. So that's very similar using that button to the MIG. Whereas if you use the pedal, you've got that variety uh, that variation, I should say, from from five amps right the way through to three seven five. So I, I prefer the pedal because of that. You, you've got a lot more control of the weld tool. Um, so if you use the pedal, you don't use the trigger. Is that no? What? No, no, no. You you can use the trigger if you if you're up high or something like that. If you're away from you know if you don't have access to a pedal. Uh -huh. You can use the the button. The button is um, predominantly used for like on-site welding. If you were to be welding something up, up, up high, rather than you using your foot, you know you can, you can well, yeah you using the button rather than using the pedal. I so, see. You ready? I do. Yeah, let's do it. Do we want to put the glass on it in a bit as well? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, can you drive? Yeah. Can you drive? Yeah. Right. So, it's, yeah. it's exactly the same as the driving a car. Then. So, the faster you want to go down the motorway, the more you accelerate. Okay. So, the, the more you pop, the more you put your foot down on the pedal. Okay. So, I'm not going to push that button. Well, let me just get you some different gloves. They're the wrong gloves. Okay, just a bit of that. Yeah, just pop them on for me. So, so you'll, you'll notice that these are rather than the thick red gloves that we've got here, these are heavy industrial gloves for high heat input, like the MIG welding. These are the thin, the thin um, tungsten gloves where you can actually you can manipulate and feel the tungsten and the wire a lot better. You have more so, sense and feeling with these thin gloves. When I start, I shouldn't uh, press well, it all the way down. You can do. Yeah, that's fine. Because I've packed it at 150 amps. Okay. Yeah. So is your uh, your bag turned off? Yeah. Super. All right. So again, we'll do autogenous first. So A nice, rub. nice, easy rub. Yeah. As soon as you're ready. As soon as you want to start, put your foot on the, uh, the throttle. Okay. Yeah, so I'll, as an example, right, I'll hold it there. So you put the foot on the pedal now. Put it down. Right, foot off. Give it a bit of a scrap for her. Right, foot down. There we go. So that's the arc established now. Okay, got to try and maintain that angle. 
nice and steady, nice and slow. Okay, foot off. There we go, super. All right, so you have control now. So try and maintain that tungsten and workplace gap of three millimeters. You might be better, are you comfortable with it under there or do you prefer it uh, under, yeah, just find, find it comfy, whatever you're comfortable. That's it, just a little bit closer if you can, that's it, ever so slightly. There we go. You might be in a little bit if you want to try doing it with just one hand, get used to doing it with, with one hand. It might be easier for you rather than you. Yeah, so if, if you want, no, sit down a minute, you're all right. Put that over your legs. So you might be better holding it like that. So you can use your hand and then drag, drag your hand ever so slightly. Yeah, yeah. Because in a, in a little while, I'll be asking you to use this hand for your filler wire. Okay. You put now. Yep. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, put off. So now you've made the, that's good. No, it, it, it just proves that because you've made contact with the plate, you've short circuited through to the plate. So now, rather than your tungsten being the electrode, the plate was the electrode. That's what all this is on my bench is where it arcs out through the back of the plate, you see. The tungsten melts at about three and a half thousand degrees and steel is about, what, 1600, something like that. So you can see there's just a tiny little bit of the tungsten in there. So if that was a weld to be examined, the, exam, the non-destructive test would pick that tungsten up in the exam and then that would be classed as a defect. You would have to grind that out and then go over it. So just try again. Okay, nice and steady. There we go. Okay, so you can see, you can see, I don't know what, yeah, you can see on the camera there. So from, from that portion to about that portion there, that's when you had the perfect three millimetre gap, but then you was going a bit higher up and higher up and higher up. So the heat stain in here is from the plasma gas and not the actual arc concentration. So you can see from there to there how you was maintaining three millimeters high, and then you was coming up a little bit higher and then higher and higher and higher. That that heat marking on the plate is from the gas and not the actual tungsten. So we try try it just a little bit a little bit more along there. Give it a scrap. Give it a, sometimes it needs a scrap. Yeah. 
Super. Yeah. Wonderful. You can see now, you can see how it's it's uniform right the way along. So that's good that you've maintained you've maintained that um, that three millimeters gap. The difference in the two there, so there to there was where you were starting to get a little bit higher. But with this one, you've maintained that nice three millimeters high. That's the critical part. Good, well done. Let's get another plate. So we'll we'll try and do um, a little bit of filler wire. Is your helmet on the right setting? Because I, I, uh, I think because you was on grinding. Yeah. Setting Oh, if you, it just protects you. If you do manage to have a look. Yeah, I'm just getting Okay, super. I think uh, let's have a look. So we'll just change the tungsten because of that little strike that you had. So we'll just pop that in there like so. And this is this is very similar to um it's very similar to the mig gas. If you if you don't have the correct um, height, you lose your, uh, your your protection from your your inner gas. So that's why it's important to try and maintain uh, that three millimeters. If you was to come up to say ten millimeters, you would then uh, introduce oxidization into the weld tool. Right, so try it with one hand, that's right, because in a minute you're going to need this hand for your filler wire. Yeah, okay, whenever you're ready. So just do it without one hand for now. A little bit closer. Okay, not bad. It's a little bit slower. I'm trying to adjust your angle a little bit. All right, so just, just try and get comfy. Okay, yeah. Do you want to try it with the filler wire? Yeah? All right, so try and maintain something about 200 millimeters because obviously, if, if you get it, too close like that to the arc, then these gloves, these gloves are only there to protect you from the uh, the UV radiation and a little bit of heat more than anything. So not as good. So left hand out of the way, strike up, and then introduce your filler wire. Excellent. Now bring your filler wire in. That's it, super. Well done. Okay. Yeah, it's good. You can see just that there's just a tiny little bit of spatter there on the end. So that means that the plasma gas was actually melting the filler wire rather than you introducing the filler wire into the weld tool. Okay, so it was just that little bit too high. Yeah, so right, same again. So strike up, bring your filler wire in. Whenever you're ready. Yep. Yeah. 
Good. Okay. Good. You can see how it soon gets close to your fingers, and then it'll it, it'll get uh, your, your fingers get extremely hot because these are only very thin gloves. But uh, that's good. Well done. I'll just if I if we if you do well then now, and I'll grab that hand and I'll grab that hand, and I'll show you the feeling of what we need to achieve. So it's nice and steady, nice and steady speed, and nice and steady introduction of the filler wire. Okay, right. So if we get ready in position. Right, hold that there, like so. Right, are you ready? Yeah, we're going to do well now. So, whenever you're ready, so foot down. Okay, and then we introduce the filler wire, so nice and steady. Right into that into that well pool is where we want to be aiming it. Nice and steady runs like that, maintaining that three millimeter bead height. Let that let that heat build up in the plate. And then you're introducing the filler wire right at the very front of that weld pool. Okay, nice and slow. And then come away, that's it. There you go. It's all about just introducing the filler wire right at the very front of that uh, weld pool. Okay, uh, do another one there along there and let's see. So make sure that this is out of the way. That's it. Super. Again, you can see how hot that is. You know, that's again, that's probably three or four hundred degrees cherry red. Yeah, happy? Yeah, good. Well done. So you can see, you can see the differences in, in the two processes um, where you need you need an awful lot of dexterity with the tungsten inert gas um, over over the MIG. So this is like we were saying before. This is a, a quality based um, application where next door the MIG welding is more of a, um, a mass production, high high demand, low quality application. So. Yeah, there we go. So, Paul, can you, can you give some example for the where they do MIG and TIG welding? Sorry? Uh, for MIG and TIG welding, like applications in the uh, industry, oh. like any industry, like can yeah. you give some oh. examples? Uh, we were we was just on about it before. You have probably utilized um, tungsten inert gas in a, a high quality environment like the nuclear or petrochemical industry, for example, um, mixed oxide plants and reprocessing plants, food processing, uh, something that's, that needs a, a very high quality. Um, for, the, for the metal inert gas, the MIG welding, something not so much of high quality. So uh, I don't know, maybe um, car trailers, for example, or caravan chassis or uh, structural engineering, like, you know, uh, buildings, um, RSJ structures. Uh, the majority of the buildings that you see today are, um, are MIG welded or books cord. Uh, so, yeah, things like that. Okay, but, but the strength of the weld is about the same, isn't it? 
the strength of the weld, there's there's an element of more strength within the TIG because of the, the penetration, um, but the strength is, uh, yeah, it's, it's marginal. It's just okay. that there's very, there's a few elements of um, contamination in, um, in, in MIG welding than there is in TIG. Mm -hmm. Okay, so TIG, TIG is, uh, in that case, TIG is more expensive to, yes. to apply and yes. to tra train as well. Definitely, yeah, yeah. That's why that's why you you pay that little bit extra for a, a quality based product mm -hmm. with with very little defects. Yeah, this 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 was very uh, useful. And uh, I think for for the students here. And well, is there? It, it, yeah, thank you very much. So, is there any is there any question from the audience? Because I want to take you again back to Kahoot, so hopefully this time it will work better. So before that, uh, or during the code, you can also think about that. Uh, Paul will be around. So Paul, if you don't mind, we will, I will take them to Kahoot for for now. Yeah. Okay. So let me find it first. So please hold on a bit. I have to make sure that it's opening the correct one. Then I'll share with you the um, the pin number. Okay, I think this is the correct one. So can everybody join this one, please? Oh, and I will share my screen this time. I'm not going to forget that. Okay. So we will have four questions. And in the end, we will have the winner. So hopefully it will not take so long. So also think about if you have any questions, we will be ending this session shortly. Uh, I want to wait a bit more because there are more people in the session. Okay, so let's start. Welding part two. Okay. True or false? The consumable electrode is the basic difference between MIG and TIG welding. Is that true or false? True for blue, false for uh, red. Yes, exactly. Everybody got it correct. But I think in Kahoot, speed is also important. So, okay. So here is the fastest one for this question. Let's continue. What is autogenous welding? Red kind of MIG welding. Blue welding of two similar materials. Yellow welding when no filler is used. Green welding of two dissimilar materials. So as you may remember, we did autogenous welding in the TIG part, right? The first part of TIG. Okay, so actually it is when no filler is used. 
because uh, if you want to uh, join same materials, usually you want to use the same uh, material to fill the weld, so you don't put any filler. So this is autogenous welding, and it is only you need a welding torch for the TIG. Yeah, so it is not really two similar materials. That's, uh, I believe it's called homogeneous welding. That's more generic. Um, so autogenous is kind of like a type of that you can think of. And welding of two dissimilar is, I think it's called a different welding. So I'm, I'm not sure about the name, but uh, definitely this is not a kind of MIG welding. With MIG, we cannot do autogenous because we always have electrode coming out of the torch. Uh, let's go to the next question. So let's see who is the leading. Oh, okay. So we have a new one coming. Let's go. True or false? The welding gas protects the melt pool from the excessive heating. Blue for true, uh, false for red. Not really. This is uh, welding gas protects the melt pool from the atmosphere. So it's make a shielding, uh, right? Shielding effect. So as Paul showed in the last, uh, first hour, last part, he showed with and without uh, welding gas. Um, so this is false, actually. Because excessive heating is more about the power that you transfer and the, the distance that you keep the electrode. Okay. Great. So last question. So let's see who will be the winner. Which one is controlled by the foot pedal in TIG welding? So red is welding power. Blue is welding temperature. Yellow is feed speed and green is amount of consumed electrode. So let's see who will be the winner. Okay, we are almost done with the session. Yes, it's the welding power. So most of you got it correct. And yeah, feed speed is not really because it all depends on our hands actually. But when we push the foot pedal to max, we give maximum power that we can give. If we don't push it at all, we don't give any power. Amount of consumed electrode, it's again, it's indirectly. So it depends on us again, uh, on other parameters, not the food pedal. Okay, so let's see who is the winner. Congratulations, the third ra ranking, okay. Yes, second. And who was the first? Well, very close score. Wow, good job, 1032, yeah. Good job, everyone. Uh, I think it's, it's a learning for everyone. I, I'm also learning <laughs> a lot of things and also learning Kahoot quiz and <laughs> things like that. Yeah, so thank you very much. So you can print the screen, winners. And, and thank you very much all for coming here and making this session very exciting. And uh, I want to ask if there's any question uh, from audience. If not, um, that's okay. I'll be, I'll be here for like two, three minutes, you can ask. And your attendance is recorded automatically. And thank you very much all for coming. 
you can leave now if you like and uh, we wish you the best in the remaining of your semester and in your exams and in your graduation thank you i'll stop recording now <laughs>